Um, Devin Brute is not joining us tonight. She is uh, unable to attend, but will hopefully be starting up next round with us. Welcome to the November 20th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Tonight is our big night, hurrah, where we begin and hopefully end deliberations on the eight projects that have been submitted to us. Um, as, so that's that's the main, really, the, the, the big item on the agenda. Before we get to that, we always begin with uh, public comment on anything that is CPC related. And uh, I think maybe Michael Skillicorn from Grow Food Northampton is here to make a brief comment. Michael, is that you out there? With the grow food hat on? No. Anyone from grow food? All right. If Michael did have something that was pertinent to the to the project, so if he comes on in another minute, we'll we'll let him or anyone from Grow Food uh, make that make that statement. Um, minutes. We have minutes to approve. Sarah sent them out to us late this afternoon. Minutes from October the twenty fourth. Do people have any hmm. comments on those minutes? Should be the thirtieth. October thirtieth. Made an error. Ah, okay. Well, that's one comment. Uh, 1030. Uh, Martha? Um, they look great. I just, um, Sarah, on the um, <clears throat> page two at the top, um, the discussion about the historic outbuildings, um, there's an incomplete sentence there. I mean, I might have been that incoherent. No, no. I, uh, <laughs> bringing the newer buildings into the preservation mix is a challenge. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Julia? Uh, so now I hope I'm looking at the right minutes. We're talking October 30th, but um, we're, we're at the chair's report where it says the Friends of Northampton Pickleball have raised funds for bathrooms. They've raised funds just for the building of the six courts, because remember, we funded them up to one level and they needed to raise more to get to the courts. The rest of their fundraising that will follow will handle amenities. So oh. there, there is not enough money for amenities yet. I will clarify that. So pick, Friends of Pickleball have raised funds to match the CPA funds and will continue to raise funds. Well, not, not to match the CPC funds. To meet uh, the to meet the the estimate for the six courts, right? We funded okay. and they had to add on. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Martha and Julia, for those comments. Any other comments regarding the minutes of October the thirtieth? Is there a motion to approve the minutes? That I mean, was that an, an, an itching eye, or was that a motion to approve? Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, is there a second? second? Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Sarah, roll call, please. The roll call on that. Let me. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Julia. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Martha. Yes. Chris Tate. Yes. Chris Hellman. Yes. And Brian. Yes. All right, you may. <clears throat> Thank you, Sarah. Um, I have nothing for the chair's report, so we'll move right into the financials. Uh, Sarah sent a, sort of an updated version of that. Sarah, if you could go over that with us. I don't know if screen sharing is appropriate at this point, but maybe for folks who are listening in or will zoom in later, it might make sense. And Sarah, if you can talk about that additional money that came in from the state, and also can you talk briefly about your anticipation of the spring round uh, projects that you know about, and if there is money attached to those projects? Thank sure. you. Um, so the financial overview is really unchanged um, from what the committee has previously seen. The bottom line, uh, 
one just over 1.9 million is still what we have available for the entirety of fiscal year 2025. Uh, the only change is the um, the the state match. So we we received uh, 395,000. $584, which was uh, just over $89,000 more than anticipated. Uh, Department of Revenue never gets the what, what we are intended to set aside quite right. There's all, It seems like there's always a little bit more. I cautiously add some to give us as much money as we can um, have available for the fiscal year, but it was a little bit short. So we won't be able to spend that surplus funding above our estimate until fiscal year 26. Uh, and rundown of the projects that were submitted for funding this round, um, totaling um, just under 1.4 million in CPA requests, um, matching uh, CPA funds with another 2.1 million from other sources. Uh, so we, we do have funds available to fund everything, but it's up to the committee to decide how much to reserve for the next funding round. And for projects that could come in uh, in the spring round, we do anticipate one significant open space uh, preservation project. Um, most likely Valley CDC will come in for uh, another another request for the Crafts Avenue project. Um, and a, a couple of other things that might be smaller that are bouncing around, but those are two of the, the two that we know of for sure. Uh, questions for Sarah? Uh, Chris Hellman? Sorry, I'm looking for the right buttons. Um, Sarah, do we have any sense of um, the size of those two requests, particularly the Valley CDC one? We, I don't at this point. Um, both of those could potentially be pretty significant asks, maybe $400,000, $500,000-ish. Uh, I know Valley was looking at when exactly would make the most sense to apply. So the initial funding that was received it, um, the last round was really to demonstrate a local match and allow them to start applying for grants. And this would be additional funding to actually allow them to begin work. And when you said 400,000, you're talking about per request or right, per request. Yes. So a potential 800,000 and change. Um, and I was talking to uh, Historic Northampton over the weekend, and um, they're not sure when they're going to, but they're going to be they're going to be looking at another request for Parsons, um, the Parsons project. Um, and I encourage them to, uh, particularly if they were planning on anything for this spring, to adopt a tiered approach to funding for that for any of that. Other questions for Sarah? So we're looking at the potential for I, I heard you say four to five hundred thousand per project, Sarah. Is that yeah, I'm nothing solidified at this point, but potentially somewhere in that range. Okay. So we could be looking at again over a million in requests for the spring round. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, anything else for Sarah? Uh, Grow Food Northampton, are you there to? Uh, so a, a Grow Food Northampton sent me a message. It's a Lisa zooming in from St. Louis, so she's not able to uh, unmute, uh, but she said that Michael may be joining. Okay. So I think we can just wait and go out of order a little bit with public comment, but if Michael is able to come in. Um, so this is our, this is our big, our big night. We have 1.377 million that came in requests from the, from the uh, eight proposals. We have 1.944 million. So as Sarah said, we can certainly fully fund all of the projects. Um, if we were so inclined, um, there would be, uh, if we were to do so, we would have somewhere around six hundred thousand uh, dollars left um, to bring us into the fall round of of of, of projects. Folks out there in Zoom land, uh, 
may need to be reminded that we as the CPC are the recommending body. It is city council who funds this. Uh, we can recommend either to fully fund a project, to partially fund a project, or to not fund that project, um, uh, and or we can ask that that project defer and resubmit next round if we if there are certain things that 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 uh, that we would request from them. Um, and uh, uh, without further ado, I as I recall, and my my brain is shaky on this. Uh, it, it made sense last time for us to simply start with a go round with committee members giving general comments on what they see as the strength uh, or weaknesses or concerns about the projects that they have and whether or not they are uh, comfortable with fully funding and and uh, and leaving next springs round at that 600,000 or so. So if that makes sense, this isn't uh, weighing in on or committing to any certain proposal. It's simply giving a general overview of your thoughts on the A projects and maybe what you see as weakest, maybe what you see as the strongest uh, thoughts on holding, holding money back. Uh, so if that's okay, I think we'll do that. I think it's worked well in the in the past i i'm just going to go around and call on people if that's all right i'm going to do it as as i see on my screen from sort of top left clockwise around or or going through rows so julia you're you're on yep we're going to go to someone else first yes okay uh kevin um, I guess my, I, I had done a sort of ranking of my uh, preferences and, um, I'll, I'll indicate that the, the Cook Avenue housing seemed a, a number one priority for me. And uh, although I, uh, found appealing all three of the rec department, um, proposals that I thought the least um, compelling of those was the uh, pavilion at Grow Food. Um, and all of the other ones, I uh, thought, so, well, probably the historic outbuildings can wait. On the other hand, it's not very big amount of money. So, uh, but all the other ones were sort of in between those two for me. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Julia? Sorry, yeah, I can unmute now. So, uh, similar to Kevin, I with the housing as a high priority uh, and pretty excited about Cook Avenue. I looked at the both of the historic projects. I like both historic projects and we have uh, sufficient funds in the historic reserve to cover both projects. So I'm not sure that I saw any need to, to delay or defer them. And interestingly enough, I find that on my walks, I'm suddenly looking at all of the outbuildings in Florence and, and there's a, there is an awful, there are an awful lot of older outbuildings. This would be a really interesting project. And I live next door to one of the ones that was lost recently over on Lily Street, which was in the project. So it's kind of catching my attention. It's well written. It's well crafted. I'd be excited to, to fund that and see what we get out of that. Uh, I support both of the recreation proposals. Um, those are proposals that are coming out of Parks and Rec. They're needed facilities in the city. And um, I, I, I actually, I feel positive. I'm not sure about the uh, amount of funding, but uh, the pavilion for Grow Food would also be a great community resource and be excited to see us work on that. So that is my, that's my summary. Thank you, Julia. Uh, Chris Hellman. Hi, thanks, Brian. Um... So like my colleagues before me, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on the housing stuff. Um, I think um, I found the Mainsfield flood plan proposal numbers to be squishy. Um, there's 64,000 in there that um, for a, for a, uh, 
information gathering session that um, I'm just I'm I'm not committed to. Although I think the concept um, about resiliency for that facility is is an important one. Um, I, I misspoke when I talked about historic Northampton. It's the Shepherd House that they're looking at for additional funds at some point. Uh, so let me just correct that. On the JFK Court rehabilitation, um, I, I I don't see I I personally don't see any way um, that I cannot go forward with that fully funded. Um, my question to Sarah would be, is that something that would be eligible for bonding? Um, and <clears throat> uh, that's that's what I got. Uh, Sarah, can you answer that question now? Uh, I would have to double check with bond council to be sure, but I would anticipate that it would be. It's a city owned resource um, and the useful life of the, the courts would certainly exceed any term of the bonding. That that was my thinking as well, and it's the kind of big ticket infrastructure project that I think bonding sort of lends itself to. So I just want to put that on everybody's table, particularly if we're looking at a potential million dollars in requests for the spring. Uh, Chris Tay. Um, I really like the projects where we aren't fully funding the entire amount. Um, I like CPC being like a, a seed fund, but not the entirety. So um, the uh, portable housing fund, uh, Cook Ave housing, JFK court rehabilitation. I like those a lot because we're not being asked to fund the entire amount. Um, but other than that, I, you know, I think all the proposals have merit, so I don't really feel strongly about one more than another. Thank you, Chris. Martha. I, um, concur about the housing, uh, the Cook Avenue, also the mortgage subsidy. Uh, those are very important. Um, I also agree with what Julia said about the historic projects. Of course, um, uh, I just, they're small and I think they will go a long way. The impact will go a long way. Um, I'm concerned about projects where construction money is involved. And this is just um, in somewhat related to the recent election. I think that we're gonna see a lot of escalation. If tariffs are put brought back or increased, we're gonna see a lot of escalation in construction costs. And um, so if we hold off, for example, on JFK, and they come back to us or we delay for six months or a year, I think it's gonna cost a lot more money. That's my prediction. And that's what the uh, construction industry is uh, concerned about, so I align with them. Um, so that would involve the courts and that would also involve the pavilion at community gardens. Um, if those projects aren't ready to go out to bid, and I don't know that we know that, Sarah, maybe you do, um, they may just be a lot more expensive and they may, and we may see the applicant coming back for more money, may. Um, and then the Mainsfield project, um, I, I thought that the letters of support for that were really um, uh, just great. And I have to admit, I had no idea how many uses of that property there are um, and the different uses that people weighed in on, which is great. I am concerned about the long term of that uh, site, though. Um, I think I asked, I know I did in my um, initial questions on these, whether the consultant was going to be looking at um, but the impact of water on the watershed, because the um, water that's going in there is not just coming from Northampton, it's coming from uh, upstream. And I don't know how much um, that's going to affect, that would factor in. And I, I think that's important. Um, but that said, I do think it's a very um, needed and loved place in the city. So I would like to see something happen there. And that's about it. Uh, let me. 
Yeah. Um, I think just in terms of like a framework, um, I know some people said like CPC money being like a part of the funding, but I also, I like the idea of CPC being like a resource to something that like otherwise wouldn't happen. And, and some of the parks and rec things I hope continue to happen. I mean, not that I, I want all of it to be funded, obviously, but I just, I'm curious about like with the Grow Food Pavilion, I think it just wouldn't happen if we didn't fund it. And um, yeah, that just feels important because I've been to the community gardens and I think a pavilion would increase a lot of access to that space. I found when I go to the community garden, sometimes it is sort of like a hostile environment. There's not a lot of like seating. It's like, like I don't really garden, but like I have friends who do and it it's like having a space like a pavilion would, would increase, I think, a lot of access to uh, people who might not otherwise feel like it's a place they can go. Um, and also, yeah, like a, with all the climate change stuff, um, it may be harder and harder to maintain a community garden and having a cooling area to do so would feel really important. Um, and Mainsfield, yeah, I play softball, so I, I'm <laughs> invested in Mainsfield, but yeah, similar questions around like um, the, like it doesn't really feel like it's gonna help. I don't know if it, it doesn't feel like, oh yes, and that's gonna get closer to solving the problem, but I can put some faith in the process, I guess, but um, it does seem like a big problem. And there's like other questions. I know people have been talking about lighting Sheldon Field, for example, or like whatever. And I'm curious about that pros and cons list, but maybe this funding is a step towards all of that. So um, that's my feelings on the rec stuff. <clears throat> um, everything else doesn't really seem like people have said need to like adjudicate. Um, yeah, and I hope to see like more on the historic stuff has been sitting with me around just like what do we preserve why <laughs> that kind of thing but I think those are big more philosophical questions that aren't related to these particular proposals not that I'm anti-preserving the things they want to preserve but just being mindful about how we do that and what we put money into for what reasons so yeah yeah So this is a little bit different for me in terms of my participation with this group in that of these proposals in the past, there have always been one or two that I kind of thought, I don't know, you know, this looks problematic and, and there were clearly defined problems. <clears throat> this time around, um, I don't have that going on <clears throat> in my thinking. Um, the affordable housing ones <clears throat> are very um solid i wish there were more of them but we'll go with with what we have um the historical ones to me are quite exciting i like the idea to catalog that and then to, and then to to continue to work with shepherd's house um the pavilion at grow food i drive down that road every day um and i kind of smile to myself at what that whole area has become i think it's a real um, shining star for um, that part of Florence. And um, I think having a pavilion there as well will add to what's already there and enhance the community experience that other folks have already um, mentioned tonight. So I'm basically inclined to um, support all of these because they're known quantities and, and um, we have asked us a few times about what might be coming in the next spring session. And even tonight, I don't feel we have um, solid um, ideas of what those may or may not be. So, so with these eight proposals, we're dealing with a known quantity and I'm inclined to support them. Thanks. I would... Uh... I think you should not just smile to yourself, Jeff, but smile to everybody else too, because it is it is remarkable the transition of that um, between the Florence Fields and Grow Food sites, and it's 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 really pretty cool. Uh, I'll I'll put my two cents in here. Um, 
Uh, I have a, uh, again, I, I, I think all the projects are strong, but there are a few things that I, I worry about. Um, one is, and I think Chris Hellman referred to it as sort of the, the squishiness of the uh, Mainsfield um, resilience plan budget. It just seems like it was thrown out there without a whole lot of thought, and that concerns me. Chris pointed out the 64,500 lump sum for engagement and visioning. Uh, it seems like these, to me, these are two separate projects. One is sort of this hydrologic and, you know, this monitoring. And then the second is, well, what, what, um, what do we envision for Mainsfield to, to become? And I, I guess I see this at two separate proposals, uh, but um, uh, uh, that's that's how I feel about that. The Grow Food project, I mean, I love Grow Food. I love everything about Grow Food, but I don't like a project coming in with no estimates of what the cost of the project is. And they don't have those. We haven't seen any of that. And that concerns me. The concerns that we would be putting money or locking in money uh, into a project that we don't know whether they could get additional funding for if in fact it comes in well over budget and hopefully michael will can, can join us um i don't think he's there quite yet and maybe provide uh, a little brian elisa shared that michael has a, a family situation and won't be able to join but uh she typed that uh grove northampton got one estimated bid for the work and it's over three hundred thousand. And they have already gone out to bid and are expecting three proposals on Friday. On Friday. Okay. So, but the first bid came over 300. Yeah. So that wasn't, I, I don't think that was a full bid, but that was more of a construction estimate for the work. Okay. So that's my, that's my concern with, um, with the grow food project. And that's again, nothing against grow food. It's just, I'm wondering whether whether we could we could delay that the um, uh, mortgage subsidy program. I know we funded that that before. We've had great success in in getting four uh, families, um, helping them out with that down payment, which I know can be an insurmountable problem for many families. It concerns me a little, and I think I was concerned last time, is that these projects aren't locked into being affordable housing projects. Uh, unlike the um, the Habitat for Humanity, where you know it's going to remain in a, as affordable housing, I guess the mor mortgage subsidy program is, yeah, let's get lower income folks into these houses uh, and and realize their dreams. But there's a situation that can happen uh, where you know, a number of years down the road, these are these these are are now locked, not locked in as as affordable housing. So those are the those are some of the issues that I have. I also am, am hearing what Sarah says. Um, I can't remember the last time we've we have funded conservation land. It's been quite a while, and if we get a real big project out there, I would hate to not be able to. Um, uh, have the CPC commit to helping to fund that fund that project, um, and and it sounds like there, that it could be a big one, a big one coming up. Uh, I would also hate to see a really big another big affordable housing project come up that we could not uh, fund as well because we didn't have the money. So I guess it concerns me to be to be leaving ourselves with. Um, with six hundred thousand dollars, if in fact we knew the two projects were coming up, that that could be as much as a million, and that's just two. So those are those are some of the concerns that I have. Um, anybody, uh, Julia, was was there a hand there? Yeah, I just want to the concern you just expressed about what might come in the spring, what we know we have in the fall, the amount we have just brings back the conversation that we had last year, you know, is, and, and I know this is not the meeting to talk about it, but is there a moment where we would just want to take the amount of money we have for a year and say half in the fall, 
half in the spring. Let's see what we get. We may have to defer some things to spring as a result, but in, in that way, we can at least give equal attention to both of our sessions instead of spending one session saying, well, big things might come in. So we're gonna say no to some people. I just, I'm, I'm always wondering about a, 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 a good way to think about the idea that we have two funding rounds and one pot of money. In a better world, we'd have two pots of money, a pot for each funding round, but we have one pot, two rounds. And we tend to see the, the, the larger numbers, it looks like almost always in the fall. So hold that thought, put hold that, that away, thought. let's I vote on it. these. But I do wanna think about that again and again and how we can be equitable in approaching fall and spring. Housing, historic, open space, recreation. One thing that strikes me is perhaps a little different this year than last or this fall than last fall is that Sarah was unaware of any programs coming in for next spring. And here she's thinking that there that there might be two. Any other general comments before we begin this process? So a, a, a reminder of um, how things have gone in the past. We have our little shopping cart thing where we vote to put projects into the shopping cart. Uh, that doesn't mean we're going to check them out or check out with them. Uh, but it it does mean that um, that there seems to be enough enough support. And again, we can fully fund, we can partially fund, we can elect not to fund at all, and we can defer to next spring. A reminder to some of the newer folks, if we do not fund at all, city council cannot bring that up and say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, why didn't you fund, not fund this? We're gonna fund it. They will only appropriate money for projects that we are pushing, are putting forward uh, to, to them. Uh, it, it, in the interest of, of process and time, it seems to me that the Cook Avenue Habitat for Humanity project got sort of a resounding thumbs up does anyone want to suggest putting that into the shopping cart as is, which is a two hundred thousand dollar project? Um, okay, Kevin was a thumbs up. Was there a sort of all right? Jeff as a second. So these are going. This is going into the shopping cart. And so I'm, I'm sorry. Which ones were those? That was the Cook Avenue Habitat for Humanity. Okay, great. Just right. that one. Just that one. I think was our people seem to be pretty unanimous about that. And someone stopped me if I'm speaking uh, inappropriately here. The affordable housing fund, going to the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Truly, I love your background. It's sort of like Monty's, um, Monty's March beginning on Monday for, yeah, there you go. <laughs> now there's no Julia. Um, so I, I also heard a lot of support for that affordable housing fund, uh, the $70,000 one, is that right? Um, any strong feelings that uh, would would say, would would not put that into the shopping cart? Uh, are we feeling pretty good about that, that fund? Is there, okay, so Jeff, Jeff's got a first thumbs up, so suggesting putting that in. Julia holding up a second. Uh, let's take a little break. It looks like Grow Foods got a hand up there. Uh, whoever Grow Food person Hi. is. It, yeah, it's Elisa. I'm sorry, I'm in a, at a conference in uh, St. Louis and I'm actually, I was in a session and Michael was supposed to represent us, but we back channeled and he has a family emergency that he's tending to. Oh my. So if I can just step in and... Um, respond to a couple of the things that you were talking about, about Grow Foods Project. I'd like to be able to do that if you're willing to take public comment this late in the meeting. Sure, we'll make an exception for you, please. I appreciate that, thank you. Um, so we did get one, uh, it's not the final bid, but we did get one estimate that was at about $303,000. We expect the other two bids to come in right around the same place, about $300,000. One of the things that um, some of you might know is that we, Grow Food Northampton received a federal earmark 
uh, two years ago. We have an eight year period uh, during which we can spend it if it's not clawed back by the Trump administration. Um, and we have always planned on using some of that funding. It all has to be spent on improvements of the community farm. Um, so we fully plan to spend some of that money on the pavilion. So anything that we're not able to gather um, from the CPA or other institutional sources, we will be able to cover with the funding from the federal earmark. So that's that's just to give you a little bit more information about um, how we will complete the project for sure uh, this coming spring and summer. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to clarify is the use of this pavilion. It's not just at the community garden, the, the organic community garden that we run. We have a 121 acre community farm in Florence where we lease land to six farms. Uh, more than half of those are owned and operated by farmers of color. We have one collective of 20 Somali Bantu refugee families. We also work hand in hand with the Northampton Public Schools to do education uh, programming on the community farm. So we have over a thousand, over 1500 kids come to the community farm every uh, twice a year. And we also have the, the community garden that has 400 community gardeners. So the pavilion is gonna be used for all of these things. We also use the community farm as our staging ground for our food access work so that um, all of the food that we get, we purchase from local farms, we stage it and prepare it for distribution out in the community on the community farm. So not only is the pavilion going to be used for educational purposes, for shelter, for community gardeners, for community events, um, for the farms to be able to do some of the staging of their CSAs and that kind of thing, we're also doing our food access staging. We're planning to do our food access staging in the pavilion. So it has many, many uses that all really benefit the community in um, a variety of ways. Thank you for taking the time away from your conference, Elisa, to, to, uh, to be with us. Do folks have any questions for uh, Grow Food while she is representing them? Uh, Martha? Um, yeah, just another money question. So the bids that are coming in, um, is there, are the, are the bidders um, holding their prices for a period of time? Is there anything in the bid documents that say, state they need to hold the prices for 90 days, 60 days? That's an excellent question and one that I can't answer. Michael has really been the person that's overseen the process and I haven't actually seen the... Um, the RFP that we put out. Okay. Any other questions for Lisa? Kevin? Um, yeah, hi, Lisa. Is, uh, hi. You mentioned this federal earmark. Um, is uh, Would that make up some of the difference if we were to fund you at less than the amount that you've requested of 202000 it's likely we also have um, two proposals out that we haven't received response on for capital funds. Um, they're fairly small. One I think is for $40,000 and the other is for $20,000, but we have been seeking funding. We, we weren't relying solely on uh, CPA funds. So, and we won't know about those proposals probably until February or March. But um, we do have other sources for sure to complete the funding for the pavilion. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions for Lisa? Your goal is to have this up and running by when? By the end of the summer of 2025. Okay. So not wood delaying 
deliberation until the spring dramatically change that timeline? Um, yeah, I think we wouldn't be able to, I mean, the, the building would begin, we hope, in something like April, if, um, if we were to receive the funding. And we probably wouldn't be able to sign a contract with a contractor um, if we didn't know that we had a large proportion of the funding in hand. So it would definitely put it off by at least a year. Thank you. Anything else? All right, back to your conference, Elisa. Or stick around. And <laughs> Thank you. More. Thanks more for deliver. letting me speak in the middle of your meeting. I appreciate it. Thank you that. for all the work that you do. Thanks. Okay, so we have so far in the shopping cart the um, the Cook Avenue housing project and the um, the thirty thousand from the, for the affordable housing fund. There also seem to be a lot of support for the Shepherd House Historic Northampton project as well. I don't think anyone spoke against that. Is there uh, again this is sort of a soft motion? to throw that in, not throw, gently place that into the shopping cart. Uh, Julie with her thumb up and a second from Kevin. So that's three of the uh, eight that that we have. The historic outbuildings one is I think the smallest, is that right? Uh, yeah, the smallest of the projects, 30,000 for that, for that study. Um, that seemed to generate support. I didn't hear anyone speak against that. Uh, is Do we need further discussion on that or can that go into the shopping cart as well? Uh, Chris Hellman with a thumbs up and everybody else putting their thumbs up as well. Into the shopping cart. So we've got four in there. We've got the Cook Avenue, we've got Shepherd, we've got the historic outbuildings. And we've got the affordable housing fund. Um, now comes one come come ones that are a little, uh, perhaps a little more confusing. But while it's fresh in our head, perhaps we can talk about the Grow Food project. Uh, given what um, Elisa spoke uh, just now, do people want to comment on that? Have or how are people feeling about that? But I want to touch that one, Martha. Um, Alicia answered um, a number of my questions about it. Uh, it's good to know that they have. It uh, sounds like a financial, somewhat of a financial cushion um, with the earmark. What remains in the earmark, um, and they're getting competitive bids, which is always good. So um, I guess I'm more inclined now to favor. Um, I, I think they also had some really good. Um, public comment, as I, um, my notes tell me, at our public comment session a couple of weeks ago, um, there were a lot, there was a lot of enthusiasm for it. So it's clear that it's um, needed and desired and it would be an active place. Um, so I'm inclined to um, view it more favorably. Other further comments on the Grow Food Pavilion project? Uh, Chris Tay? Just based on what Alyssa said, I'm just I'm not clear on how they arrived at their CPA request amount if they have other earmarks for it and other 40,000, 20,000 out that might be coming in. Um, and they're asking for 73% of the project total. So I just don't know why we're we're fronting so much of the project. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Kevin? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the answer that um, I heard was that, in fact, uh, the federal earmark could probably make up uh, whatever is needed. And I'm, I'm overstating that a bit, but that if we were to fund, but only partially fund, I think there are other resources that could complete the project. Other comments on the Grow Food project? Uh, let me. Yeah, I think for me, the 
it's the small things that are already out for it indicate like financial response like those might also not come back right um and or they will you know there, it, it seems like there's a lot of moving parts as there always is with Valley cdc you know it's pretty common for us generally to like have multiple moving pieces to a project and just being like our moving piece and trying to contribute our part um but yeah i think for me i i would be inclined if we aren't going to fully fund it to consider fully fund like whatever we don't fully fund like put towards this spring or something like that um and not just be like we're not fully funding it if that makes sense but I would like to fund I would like to fully fund it personally just because unlike the mains field proposal it's a little it's like very thought out it's clear that they've like thought about the exact need that they need and how to fill it um whereas the mains field one does feel squishier um so if we're going to put one off to the spring that's the one I would put off Squishy might be the CPC word of the evening. Uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris Hellman. Hi. Um, so um, when somebody comes to me and says, if you don't fund us, we probably can find the money. That's always a tempting situation for me to go, okay, find the money. Um, however, I do think that one of the other things that are funding does in addition to actually paying for things is demonstrate our commitment as a community to certain things. Um, and the perfect example of that is almost all of the major affordable housing projects where at best we are, you know, um, uh, used to attract other funds, but we're never the tipping point on, on major affordable housing programs. Our, our contributions are important, but, but the demonstration of the community's commitment to this, that type of initiative is I think it outweighs our, our actual fiscal contributions. So I think in the case of Grow Foods, um, you know, maybe fully funding isn't necessary, but I think a substantial amount of funding um, is appropriate, uh, if only to if only a to make the make it easier for them to raise the money, but also to demonstrate that this is this is a project um, that we as a community are are invested in, not just fiscally but emotionally. And uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that keep that with me as as we discuss it. Other comments about Grow Food? Well, uh, Elisa, who, who was back in her session, sent a message uh, just to clarify that the funds that they might obtain are for overall management of the community farm and flood resilience after last year's floods. And they would be able to divert some of that funding to the pavilion if necessary, because the earmark is also for um, a variety of farm related work. <clears throat> um, Sarah, the, the, I don't, have don't have the oh um Jeff you go my biggest concern from what we heard tonight from grow food is I don't want to see this postponed a year and I'm wondering about the possible discussion on on um partial funding um if that might not be a condition we could attach to an overall approval of the proposal, like Sarah question. And it seemed to me that they also said that um, if we defer to the spring, that that's not gonna meet the timeline for them to um, have a signed contract and break ground, um, meaning April of 25. So um, can we put a, a, a condition as, as far as if, if the the funding comes in from other sources, that some of that would be returned to the CPA funds, or am I out of bounds? Sarah? Yeah, I mean, we could discuss the details about how to craft that. Um, maybe requires submission of a you know, revised budget or um, or something like that. But I I think we could we could work that out. Uh. Chris Tate? 
just coming at it from from the other direction has is there any precedent for projects that we've partially funded and then they come back to us in the spring and then we either fully fund it or we give the same project more money in the spring like could we give them enough financial support to feel comfortable signing a contract and if other funding sources don't come through for them they could come back in the spring has that happened before I think so. Yes, Sarah, I want to say yes. And folks are always coming back to us asking, asking for more money. So I think we've, we've seen that for even for the same project. Is that correct, Sarah? Uh, yeah, I can't put my finger on one right away, but there, we've definitely had multiple requests for the same project when bids have come in higher. There's other extenuating circumstances. Uh, Julia? So, um, I I like this idea that should they secure some additional private funds that we would learn about it and they could submit a, a second budget. I'm also in support of giving them enough money to get this going and secure a bid and make it happen. I'm a little less comfortable with the idea that we're going to push them to use funding that they got for flood resilience, for the construction of, of this pavilion. So already in the project budget, they're using some of their HUD community funds, their HUD community projects funding. So they're using some federal funding there. They're asking us to partially fund the project and maybe some additional private funds would come in. I'm comfortable with that. I'm also comfortable with knowing that the farm and all of its projects and all of it, all of the grow food activities uh, continue to have access to whatever money they got um, from, from the federal government for flood resilience to really address flood, flood resilience issues. I think, I think that's a really serious issue in this whole river area. And that type of funding, I guess, has come up multiple times, primarily with open space projects, like where the the planning department will come in and say, you know, we need this much money. We're really hoping to get these other grants, um, but we'd like to have it all in hand. If we don't use it, we'll just give it right back to you. Sarah, how hard is it to pull up the budget for that Grow Food um, project and share that with us? Is that? Not at all. Just give me a minute. And, and while you're doing that, Sarah, can I ask you to multitask and ask answer another question? It, it really concerned me when Elisa said, unless the federal government claws, you know, with the new administration, claws back some of this, some of this money. Um, and I guess one is, how concerned are we to see this, the, the spigot close for affordable housing funds for, um, I mean, are, are any of the city, uh, the state conservation funds like the, the, um, uh, the park funds are any of those federal come from the federal government? Are 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 we going to be looking at organizations not having secondary funding coming to us now for primary funding that weren't in the past? Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say at this point. Um, you know, we we did have a, an administration in the in the past that didn't make some of the cuts that were anticipated, like community development block grant continued to be funded in a way that people didn't anticipate uh, land and water conservation fund. But, you know, it, it's, it's really tough to say what might be happening. Uh, and with earmarks specifically, uh, you know, the city's had other earmarks in the past that, you know, have been promised, but have not come through for a variety of reasons. So an earmark really isn't like valid until the money is in your hand. So the, those are, regardless of political climate, always a little bit more fungible. You got the budget coming up perhaps? Yeah. Um... Well, while she's working on that, any other comments that folks have? Uh, back to Lemmy. Yeah, and um, I think, and maybe this is like my love of grow food is showing, but 
um, in the pandemic, I know they really came through with a lot of food distribution. Um, and that's the piece that's really hitting home is like, you know, we're talking about all the uneasiness with the new administration and that kind of thing. And I'm just remembering last time we had sort of this collective crisis, how pivotal Grow Food was and like um, building up their infrastructure for things like food distribution seems really big and helpful in this moment where we have a lot of uncertainty. Um, having this community resource where like, yeah, uh, people can gather to, you know, I remember, I know we did the food distribution in Springfield um, and it's like, there's no covering. If it was raining, it was really hard to get volunteers, that kind of thing. Like this one thing that could go a long way if, if things get really hard. Um, and I just, that's sticking out to me right now, especially with all the work they already do with the refugees and that kind of thing that Grow Food is one of the organizations that really stick out in my mind as coming through in a moment of collective crisis um, and all the community organizing work I've done. Thank you, Lemmy. Um, thanks, Sarah, for pulling up this budget for all of us to take a look at. Um, so, so Sarah or uh, other folks can help me to understand this. The the pavilion general contracting and construction, would that be the one going up to three hundred thousand and everything else remaining the same, or does that general contracting construction include the engineering pieces and the architectural stuff? Um, I mean, it's not going to affect the fifty thousand, but we'll, I guess my question is: Would we be looking at a two hundred and seventy eight thousand dollar budget now going up to closer to? 400,000 because 300,000 of that would be the contracting. Is that, is my question understandable? Sarah, can you comment on that? Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm not sure what the previous bid included. So I, I can't say for sure. I don't know if Elisa is here and could speak or write to it. I have a bunch of stuff open, so I might not be able to see it. Um, but I don't know if that was just for the, the GC uh, and construction or if that included um, other aspects of the project. While Sarah has the Grow Food budget up, any any comments on on the budget? Uh, Martha? Um, my understanding is that they had put the building construction out to bid and that those bids had come in around 300, or the first one that they got was a, around 300,000. Or maybe, Sarah, you said that was a cost estimate? Um, yeah, so, so what we're looking at now was the estimate that was included in the application, and that was okay. before the... Um, that initial bid had been received. So the thing that's a little confusing about this is that if they put this out to bid, um, that says to me that the schematic design, the CDs and administration, both conduction documents, the structural engineering and the civil engineering should already be done. Yeah, and, and some of that is because this has gone through permitting. Um, so like Conservation I... Commission has reviewed and we've seen some of the architectural and engineering design. So some of it, some of that definitely is complete. I don't know if it's full construction level, um, but the, these aren't like zero, zero completion items. I mean, I would think it would have to be construction level to put it out to bid to get accurate estimates or estimate bids on it. Um, I don't know, but I think this is really is confusing because Brian, you made a really good point. And if um, they're talking about getting prices in that are around 300,000, then this is really a much more expensive project. So we probably should get clarification on that. Uh, Chris Hellman? I was just about to say less eloquently what Martha just said, which is it sounded to me, if I understood correctly, Brian, your question it was, what's going to go up to three hundred thousand? Is it that two seventy eight, which is an increase of twenty two thousand, or is it that one ninety three, which is a an increase of one hundred and ten thousand? Uh, that's that's an important that's an important piece of information. 
Or is it the 193 plus 50? They're talking about project administration, like a construction manager or something. Good point. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yep. And also so, just to add to that, um, those so that, again, the design and engineering, the first four items on this, um, they would... <laughs> It would be they're asking us basically to fund something that's already been paid for, which we can't really do. Isn't that right, Sarah? I would, so this was um this was an estimate that may have been before some of that came in. Um so Elisa has said that the 193,000 was the initial contractor estimate, but now we're hearing bids will be closer to 300,000. So so that's a significant gap. Um, allow me to remind all of us that we are under no obligation to get all of this work before us done tonight, that, uh, we could take a project like this, uh, with some of the unanswered questions that we have and defer or delay it until another meeting. And that could be the six, is it, of, uh. The fifth, I'm sorry, the fourth of um, of of December. It, I I think I heard correctly, and Elisa saying that uh, uh, two more bids are coming in this Friday. Did did other people hear that? So it seems by the end of the week we'd have a better a better uh, handle on exactly what these costs are, and some of our some of our questions might be answered. So that that is an option for us is to. Uh, is to leave un is to not resolve everything tonight, Julia. Yeah, that was exactly what I was going to say. I'd like us not to resolve this tonight, but I'd like us to request a new budget, completely new budget. Not tell us what's fixed and what moves around, but I'd like to see a brand new budget, and I and 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 they can put into that budget uh, on exactly the right line uh, what these estimates are for construction and make sure that there isn't anything that's already completed that's also in this budget request. They can certainly show us a budget of what they've already spent toward this. That's part of their contribution toward the activity. But moving forward, what will they spend on this project? What are they asking us to fund? Where are the other funds coming from that would support this project to get it to an end point? And then I think we can respond best as a as a committee about how much we're willing to to put forward on it. And Julia, yes, thank you. The, I would also add to ask them to let us know whether those prices um, that the contractors have put forward are going to be held for a certain period of time. So there seems to be, are, are, are people pretty much in support of that delaying at least our deliberation on this project? Is anyone, everybody, I'm seeing th uh, Lemmy and Jeff, okay with Lemmy? Lemmy, love of grow food, but- the, I'm, I'm abstaining. <laughs> abstaining, okay. But that, that uh, we all love grow food. Uh, Jeff. Um, I don't know how that, my thumb went up, but yeah, I'm fine with the delay as has been suggested. <clears throat> okay. So, and Sarah, you're good in terms of what, how to frame the questions to grow food? Yes. If, uh, so I have a brand new budget, obviously making sure that we see anything that's been spent so far as a match. Um, Martha's point about, uh, asking if prices will be held for a certain period of time. Was there anything else that, that we missed? And the, and the inclusion of the, the new bids, obviously. Yeah, but also in the budget, what we'd like to see are all the possible sources okay. for, right? Because we heard about other sources when, when Grow Food spoke. And I'd like to see all those sources or potential sources reflected in the budget. And and then what their real ask is of, of us, because I am... You know, now I wonder if maybe their CPA request is higher than 202. I don't know. Can't figure it out. Sarah, if you can also ask, and again, you, I, I don't see the budget in front of me anymore. The, the 50,000 for 
project administration, was it? If there could be more details on what, what that means. You know, I, I, I just, I still have a hard time wrapping my brain around this pavilion. It's four posts and a roof on it. And, and just the fact that it's $300,000 is, and I know everything, everything is just goes, goes up, up, up and up, but that, that just, but anyway, if you could, uh, if they could further explain that, that 50,000. Other comments regarding the grow food? Otherwise we are putting that project off and moving back to our shopping cart to review. We have put, uh, Cook Avenue housing in the shopping cart, uh, the historic outbuildings. Did we do that? Yes, that went in the shopping cart, right? The affordable housing fund went into the shopping cart. Um, Shepherd House, we put in the shopping cart as well. Is, is that right? Okay, so we've got four in the shopping cart, um, one on hold. Let's move to the mortgage uh, subsidy uh, program. For those folks who are a little bit newer to the committee, we have funded virtually the same project uh, a number of years ago. Uh, and I think it was the same amount. Is that correct, Sarah? Uh, 50,000 50, for four new lower, lower income home buyers. And then yeah, so the, the overall project amount was a little bit lower because there's more included this time for uh, administrative costs, but the four $50,000 mortgages are the same. Okay, um, so let's throw it open for discussion for this for this uh, sort of round two of Valley CDC's mortgage subsidy uh, program. People want to speak to this. Jeff, can I put you on the spot as sort of our resident housing guy? Well, we've done it before. I think I think it works. Um, is this the one, Brian, that you had you had suggested? Um, there wasn't a long term guarantee that it would re remain with affordable housing. Yes. Um, and so again, um, might we put a condition to that effect upon approving the proposal? Another Sarah question would be i think that makes perfect sense if we if we're able to do that sarah uh so jeff are you asking if the if the approval would require the housing to remain affordable like one of the yeah one of the conditions would be that that whatever it was you used on whatever locations that it that that property would remain under an affordable housing restriction. Yeah, uh, so not the way that this is set up. So that would um, All right. essentially eliminate uh, the possibility of a, of a bank mortgage for these properties. Okay, thank you. I mean, I still support it. Um, the affordable housing problem is, it's in crisis. <clears throat> And with the uh, incoming regime, I don't know where it's going to go. So I, I would like to see us um, act while we can. <clears throat> I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Jeff. Martha? Um, yes. So, Brian, I thought you brought up a very good point. And, Jeff, I also um, respect your thoughts about this. Um, it seems like we're we're sort of shifting the thrust through funding a project like this. You know, our goal is to create affordable housing or to support the creation of, of affordable housing and in, to ensure that. And really what we're doing here with this is we're supporting an individual or a family in getting into the housing market who can't normally get into the housing market because of cost. But we're not, um, that's really what we're doing here. We're not, we're supporting, uh, giving a, a, a you know, person or a family an opportunity to become a homeowner when they couldn't before. 
So it's, um, I think I'm putting this out as a question for the committee, you know, is that what we're about? Um, are we more about, you know, creating and preserving the housing for future um, owners um, that come along? And I can't, I don't have the answer. Thanks, Martha. You, artic you articulated that very well. Kevin? Uh, yeah, I had the same thought as Martha that um, this I, I liked all of the uh, affordable housing, quote unquote, uh, themed uh, proposals, but this one is is not necessarily adding to the historic uh, the the stock of affordable housing um, in our community, and so it was the least you know, least I felt the least good about this particular proposal. Um, and which makes me, since we're in a position of trying to figure out where do we save some money, um, Chris's idea, Chris Hellman's idea about uh, bonding um, for the uh, court uh, uh, basketball we have um, is could save us some substantial money. But if we're looking for other places to save money as well, could there be two grants instead of four? Could the uh, overhead be absorbed by the existing organization um, instead of being adding another 50 something thousand dollars? Um, so uh, those are those are questions that I was inclined to ask. Um, and in the context of this not really adding to the affordable housing stock in Northampton um, makes me feel less enthusiastic about uh, this project. Chris Tate? My recollection when uh, during the presentation also was that we funded this a similar proposal to this quite a ways back. And it took them many, many years to find those four people to um, give the $50,000 to. So, you know, I, I know it's good to kind of have that in hand, but um, with the administrative costs for the project, it, I, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just not quite sure this this one's a priority for me personally, but I'm also not vehement, vehemently opposed to it. So I'm, I'm just, this one's just kind of odd to me, honestly. Sarah, can you answer Chris's question? What once they, once we gave them the money, how long do we know how long it took to? Yeah, I'm just looking that up, and but. Before I find it, it, it was really exacerbated by issues during and following COVID. Um, let's see that. While you're searching, uh, Lemmy? Yeah. Um, I'm torn and I, I feel I feel torn about this actually in a similar way to even when the stock is increasing like the way it sort of like helps just another it takes like a chip off the iceberg of the problem of like helping a, a select few people with with the underlying issue um I like about this proposal that it is like it's not just built you know it's not just adding to the stock that's something I like I want to see more proposals that try to get more at the systemic issues but I think this one still you know like unfortunate that it's not going to help more than the select few people it can help and I'm, i want to find more systemic i want to find more systemic <laughs> solutions than this um yeah it's which adding to the stock feels slightly more st systemic but you know it is still could change four people's lives so i think unless we have like a real reason to be conservative on the money and if we can bond to the tennis courts and stuff I would probably support it but also would love more systemic solutions than this to put money towards <laughs> uh, Julia you haven't spoken to this um uh, yeah um and I I'm sorry I was thinking about what Lemmy said in terms of systemic there's not a lot that we do that's actually systemic is there everything we're doing is a project a project a project and hopefully all those projects in their aggregate uh, have a have a have a more systemic change uh, I I am not opposed to providing subsidies on mortgages to to to, to for lower income families and that's what this would do I think that's a really worthwhile thing for housing uh and if there was a 
ways to cut this. It's let's provide the the money for the mortgage subsidy. That's four times fifty thousand in their budget. That's two hundred thousand, uh, and not provide all of the other expenses, the personnel. They're indirect that they asked for. I was surprised to see an indirect. We never see indirect in our grant requests here. And these guys had thrown, it's a small indirect, but still to throw in an indirect uh, was sort of a surprise. Um, so I would support it in its whole, but if we can't get to its whole, I would support what we could provide to those four families or people or whoever it's gonna be. Is there any luck in answering um i think it was chris tate's yeah. question uh so this was funded the first round in 2021 and uh the last mortgage was able to be closed in august 2024 um and i along the way i, I talked to valley about some of the administrative issues they were having and you know problems just making it work just because of the housing market challenges so um they met with 33 um, low moderate income households who would potentially qualify for the program. Um, and let's see, what else did they do? I'm just trying to summarize their report. Um, so they, um, you know, it, it's not just the four mortgage um, recipients that they end up working with. It's a lot more than that. So they'll continue to work with 10 of the 33 low and moderate income households on various financial challenges, including budgeting that includes savings, maintaining positive credit and debt utilization, building credit, applying for affordable housing opportunities that are available and reducing debt. Um, and then they go through the various um, programs that they'll work with. So that's all totally separate from the administrative cost of of this program. Um, so it's related, but it's not anything that was funded by the CBA. So we were, these funds previously essentially had funded um, a staff person to deal directly with those those four mortgages and all of the, the work that that entailed, but did not extend to the broader financial counseling. Chris, Tate, does that answer your questions? Um. But the current proposal does include that money where the past proposal didn't? No, it, it does not. So it still includes only direct staff costs related to administering these four mortgages. And the administration is 25% of the, you know, the total that's going out. It just, it seems, seems high, but again, I don't, I don't, if other people are in favor, I, I would not oppose it, vote against it. Uh, let's see, who has not spoken? I think Chris Hellman, I don't think you've had a chance to address this. Okay, sorry. Um, I think that if I just wanted to add something briefly, I, I would say that I am i don't have any difficulty um, including this in our mandate to assist with with making housing more affordable. I think that our, our our most direct and probably most effective way of doing it is 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 helping provide additional units. But I also think that the way you deal with the pe the best we're going to be able to do is piecemeal and piecemeal includes making having a house affordable to other people rather than just making the housing affordable. And I'm not sure I said that very well, but short answer is I'm I'm perfectly happy funding this under our housing mandate. Uh, Kevin, did you have a chance to speak on this? Yeah, I started with uh, saying that because it does not add to the affordable housing stock that I look at it less favorably than the other affordable housing um, uh, applications. And I essentially still feel that way. I understand Chris's perspective on um, it, it helps somebody get into the market and that's certainly a beneficial thing. Um, but if I were gonna prioritize spending, I would prioritize adding units uh, that are affordable in perpetuity. And forgive my memory, Martha, did you have a chance to weigh in? 
Um, I kind of raised the question and I'm really on the fence about this because I do think um, supporting affordable housing has to be done um, in many different ways, I guess. You can't just be done by building units. Um, and so this offers an alternative way of, um, of making about, about housing affordable to a certain number of people. Um, I guess if money were an issue for us tonight, and I think it is, um, I probably would defer this to another round um, because of the length of time it took to get the other subsidies um, distributed in the last time. So that was three years ago, Sarah said, right, 2001. And I know COVID was involved in that. Um, so I, I think I would put it as a lower priority but I do think it's an important uh, piece of the package of making housing more affordable. I, I know there is some utility of scale um, with combining the financial programs for Northampton residents um, under the potential mortgage subsidy program for those with, um, for other communities. I know Amherst has done this and East Hampton has as well. Um, so there may be some, um, some impact if it's not funded at all. And if it's something that the committee likes, but still wants to create a, a cost savings, you might be able to just, you know, cut it in half. So a hundred thousand in, in mortgage subsidies and then whatever the administrative cost is, just cut that in half as well. Sarah, I didn't understand what you just said. <laughs> uh, so Valley CDC works on mortgage subsidies in more than one community. So East Hampton has done this. Amherst has. I don't know where they are in their CPA funded or other funded um, mortgage subsidy programs. But um, when Valley offers these uh, financial counselings or other um, you know, workshops for potential, I, I guess, customers of the mortgage subsidy program. They may not be just for Northampton residents. They could be for other uh, communities as well. So if Northampton didn't fund it entirely, that may impact some of the administrative costs. So if this is something that the committee is, is looking to fund, but still wants to create some cost savings and um, retain some funding availability for the spring, rather than um, knock it completely, you might want to look at potentially funding it fully in half to, to provide two mortgages and half of the administrative costs. I hope that made sense. Thank you. I Any other comments? That to... I'm, I'm sorry, who is, who is saying? I'm, uh, sorry, it's me. I was saying I'd support that. Okay. Um, any other comments on this? Uh, affordable housing mortgage subsidy program, the Valley CDC program. So there, so I think we're 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 not in un unanimity. Is that a word? As we often are, uh, in terms of uh, fully funding, partially funding, or even deferring until the spring, and and requesting that they that they come back with a with a. Uh, a clear, once we have a clear fiscal picture of what the projects being proposed are. Um, uh, let's see, is there a motion to put this in the shopping cart uh, at a certain amount? Does anyone wanna make that motion? Again, this is a soft motion because we're not voting, voting on it until we go to the checkout line. Kevin? Uh -huh. I would make a motion to put it in at 50% of the request. So that would be 125, uh, 126, uh, something like that, 126,000, 126,500. Okay. Uh, is there a second on that? So Kevin's got a soft motion of putting it in ha half the price. And we're wondering if anyone wants to second that. I'll second it. Okay. Who was, I'm sorry, who was that? Let me. Yeah. Okay. So let's discuss this. 
a little more. Again, this is soft motion. We're not committing, committing, but it's whether it's going in the shopping cart at half half the cost. Um, thoughts on this? Putting it in one hundred twenty seven thousand, something like that. One hundred twenty six, one hundred twenty seven thousand. Uh, One hundred twenty six thousand seven hundred sixty would be half. Okay. Any further comments on this? Um, all right. I don't know whether we want to do a roll call vote on going into the shopping cart. Is that overdoing it? Yes, we do. Do you think? Seems like that's the vibe. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me say it again. I'm like, it seems like that's the vibe. Okay. Sarah, you want to take us on a roll call? Again, there's a soft Sure. thing. The Um, proposal, so the proposal roll call is one hundred vote on twenty-six thousand seven hundred and seventy something, yeah, so uh, which roll is call cutting vote it in on half. on half uh funding for the shopping cart. Let me yes, Jeff. No. Julia? No. Kevin? Yeah. Martha? No. Chris? Uh Chris Tate? Um, abstain. Uh Chris Hellman? I'm a no. And Brian? I'm going to go with the no as well. All right, motion fails. Okay. All right, is there someone else would like to put up an alternative motion? I mean, we're already going to have another meeting, right? So to talk about the grow food project. So we could just punt on this one until the next meeting. Yes, we always have that as an option. Uh, Jeff, you were going to say something? Um, I don't have a problem with what Chris just suggested, but I was raising my hand to, to, to move. We put it in the card at full funding. I understand where Chris is coming from. Okay, so Jeff has a motion to put it in the card as full funding. Julia, that was a second. Okay, so the motion that half funding failed, now a motion for full funding. Again, a soft motion going into the shopping cart. Um, any further discussion on this? I'll just add that I'm not sure if we're trying to save some money to have things available for the spring. I'm not sure where else we can look. Um, uh, we're getting down there, so there aren't that many options left. Bonding would be one of them, but uh, this would be next on my list. Uh, any further discussion on the motion to fully fund the CDC project? Okay, Sarah? Roll call. Lemmy? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Julia? Yes. Kevin? No. Martha? No. Uh, Chris Tate? No. Chris Hellman? Yes. And Brian? Uh, no. Uh, motion fails. Was that a four to four? Yes. Okay, so motion fails unless there is a majority. Okay. Um, so we've had a fully funded, we'd have a partial funded. We have a Chris suggesting we can, re Chris Tate suggesting we can just revisit this in the next round. If in fact it's not making in our shopping cart, would we want to revisit it? So before Uh, we move on, Brian, Can I just, other than Kevin, because uh, he, I, I know where he is. Um, would anybody who voted no on that last motion care to um, um, share with us what it is that that? How do you want to go forward? Are you are you want to defer it temporarily, uh, defer it entirely, or I'm I'm just not. I, I want to know what our other options are as, as far as my colleagues go. Uh, Chris Tate. For me, it's just not a slam dunk, so I'm not putting it in the shopping cart in the first pass. 
It doesn't mean that I wouldn't vote to fund it at the end of the day, but I want to consider all of our options and what the funding is for next next for the spring and do all of that before it's and like the shopping cart to me is like oh yeah this is a slam dunk we're gonna we're gonna do this so that's that's what it is for me and knowing that we already have another meeting after this one where we're already discussing the grow food project like to me deferring it for another meeting is totally fine Thank you, Chris. Uh, other no's want to weigh in? Uh, Martha? It's a low priority for me. I, in, I'm not opposed to this, but um, I'm thinking of the urgency of some of these projects that um, are dealing with construction um, and they really need to get going or else they're going to be probably spending a lot more money or on our money. Um, and so it seems to me, given how long it took to fulfill the first, the terms of the first award, um, I just think it's not urgent that we do it this fall. And it would, um, as Kevin said, leave us um, some options, more options for the spring. And and we could encourage the city to come, or sorry, Valley CDC to come back then. I was a no vote and I, was, I would like to reiterate exactly what Martha said. Everything that Martha said, I, I, I would second. Um, who else voted? Who else was a no? Uh, Kevin Lake, were you, Kevin, were you know? Can you want to articulate that for us? As I said, that uh, this is a low priority and um, I, I want to reserve money for other purposes that are higher priorities. Okay, so is Kevin, Chris, Martha, and Brian voting no, and then the, and then the four yeses. And again, a no vote on this. If we don't, if it doesn't go in the shopping cart, uh, and we don't vote for it, it can also be. Uh, we can express the the committee sentiment that this is worthy of further examining come spring. If in fact we elect not not to fund it this time, so we're moving on with our with our shopping cart thing, and we've got two more to consider. One is the JFK court. Rehab and the other one is the mains field. Let's look at the mains field uh, flood plan. Um, uh, discussion on, let's see, do we do motions first? Um, let's do this discussion first. People want to weigh in on that. Mains field, flood resilience. Anybody? Uh, let me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's about this proposal in particular, but I have follow up questions just like other folks had for Grow Food for Maine's Field. And if we're going to put, I would like to ask more follow up those questions like, what is that community visioning? Because I've been to community visioning from the city before, and it's not particularly like earth shatteringly participatory <laughs> or anything. Um, and so, I would be curious about, yeah, just asking more follow-up questions and putting sort of the similar level of scrutiny we put on the grow food budget stuff around some of the squishiness we feel there and putting it off till next time and asking for that follow-up information. Uh, Kevin? Uh, this may be a, a version of what you expressed, Brian, but it seems like the technical uh, design of how do we create resilience in this uh, recreational space seems to be a, a, a little different from the community input part of the process. What does the community want to have happen in this space? I, 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 I think there's probably more urgency to uh, the, the, the technical parts uh, scientifically. What needs to happen? How can this be preserved? as a workable space, um, not necessarily how it be gets transformed based on community input. So Kevin, I'm hearing if, if in fact we go with Lemmy's approach, which is to uh, phrase, frame a series of questions that they would get back to us, that would be one of them. Can you that tease out the two different facets of this program? One right. is the what to do with Mainsfield from a hydrologic perspective, keeping 
the Mill River out. Um, and the second was is sort of this community engagement and visioning of what to do with the park itself. Yes. Is that correct? That's so true. Sarah, you got you got that in case we, we go this way. Other folks speaking to this project? Martha? Yeah, I think that's a good approach. Um, I'm not, I guess I'm echoing what people have said about the community visioning. I, I We got a lot of um, community engagement just having this application put in. Uh, so many people wrote in letters. We know it, you know, we have a really good, I mean, I feel like I have a really good sense of what people want there. The question is really what is feasible um, given the constraints on this property, which seem pretty severe. And um, I guess I would rather see them uh, put more funding into that and um, to really do a complete um, study of it and maybe be more expansive in the study, as I've suggested earlier, because I'm not convinced that just by looking at the you know, area around there is gonna address this. Um, but um, I, I think the community engagement could be done differently and uh, once we know what's feasible. So maybe we ask them to restructure the proposal and come back to us in the spring. Um, I don't know in terms of timing if that's gonna work for them, but I would, I would recommend that. Uh, Julia, a rec person? Yes, I'm the rec person. What are you asking me though? Are you asking me is spring a possibility or? Yes, and sort of get, gathering more information on the sort of the two different uh, facets to this proposal. Yeah, I mean, this is, and you saw all of the the support letters, et cetera. You know, this is a field that that is a high demand field. And when it went offline, we heard a lot about it from the community. So the community wants the field, they want it back, but we don't want to, we don't want to just do what we've done this year, which is we finally got it back, but we really don't have a good plan for how to manage this area in, in, in relation to what's what's happening with, with that watershed area. Um, and we're trying to balance both things, which is why we put the community into this proposal. We know what the community wants, but we need this hydrologic study and then we have to add in again what the community wants. And I think that's why you're looking at what you're looking at. Could it wait till spring? Yes, it could wait till spring. There's sort of a temporary fix on mains now. Let me, I'm assuming that you might've been able to do some playing this fall. Finally, it was a nightmare to just get it playable. Uh, and we're not sure for how, how long that, that that's gonna last. Yeah, and a birthday party, right? Because we have the pavilion that we run there. It, it's it's such a high use space. And I think that's why we were trying to get it done now, but get the funding in the spring. The study will happen over the course of the spring into summer. And hopefully the field will continue to be used. Julia, would it be possible to separate out the community input and visioning process of it from the, the technical aspects, which it seems like everybody feels are, are the you know, the, the highest priority and what needs to come first anyway. Yeah. And, and fund, one, fund that piece now and, and wait until later. I'm sure Anne-Marie Anne -Marie could restructure the budget so we could do, you know, here's what we'll fund in the fall. Let's look at this in the spring, what we could maybe fund something additionally. That would be another way to, to do it. And that would certainly be amenable to uh, to Parks and Rec. You know, we, we always, when, we, when we're working on a project, we always have, exactly what you see in there in terms of the community input thing. That was what we had at, at the Florence Fields and up at uh, Ellerbrook. And we get a lot of community out for these things because the, again, because these are high use spaces, really high use spaces in Northampton. And I gotta say Maine's field, um, that softball community, you thought the pickleballers were kind of loud. Talk to the softball folks. What about the uh, volleyball the... players? They seem pretty oh, good. right? Yeah. Volleyball. But we heard a lot from softball, in part because, you know, the men's league plays there, I think, if I understand it correctly, and they have the lights and the night and all that. Uh, I don't know. So, I mean, I should know. 
Julie, do you, um, is there a time, did the, it's Fast and O'Neill, right? Did they give you a, um, a, a timing for how long their study is going to take? No sense I don't, of I that? don't have that information. Yeah, we had some conversations about it during our meeting, but I, I don't have that information. You know, we, we, we did, yeah, we just had a study of all of our facilities that was, that was done for something else, not related to, to, to the sustainability and everything takes longer than you think. So I don't have a sense of the timing. Julia, is it reasonable to ask that uh, Anne, Anne Marie could come back in two weeks with a with a different budget? Yeah, with a separated budget. Yeah. Okay, I that's, think that's reasonable. That's that's reasonable. Okay. Any other questions or uh, Lemmy? Back to Lemmy. Yeah, sorry. I have as a, I play in both the I played the co-ed league this year and the Mary V league this year, so very invested in softball. Um, and I guess I'm I'm sort of curious about a community uh, listening, whatever engagement that's just focused on one space. When like my understanding, there's a lot of like interlocking, like sometimes you play over here. You know, there's like a lot of moving pieces to some of the leagues and stuff like that, where like some games are at Ellerbrook and some games are at Shell. You know, and so I'm also curious about, and this is just feedback that maybe is outside of the bounds of CPC, but like a larger conversation that's not just about one site um as like maybe all the softball fields or something like that i would feel a little bit more compelled by as well um just because it seems like an ongoing puzzle piece every year with all the competing leagues and you know mary v is a particularly special league as like the lesbian history of that league and the hist um yeah there's not really another league like that uh anywhere my understanding so or there is but not in massachusetts so yeah, um, just wondering about like the interlocking aspects that's not just so site specific about some of the problems that maybe people are having. That site has specific problems. All of our facilities have issues around um, maintenance. And if you're really curious, Tigen Bond did do a study for the city about all of our recreational facilities. And there's a maintenance report that's available. I think it's really worth reading to take a look at what we're facing for all of our fields. When we come to um, CPC, as a, when REC comes to CPC, it's not that we're piecemealing our fields, it's that we're really trying to address this kind of combination of, of, of what each area's issues are and keeping it and keeping all of our areas open to the extent that we can for all the different leagues that play in it. Um, and you're right, the softball folks got moved around a lot. And if, if you think the problems, you know, yes, the problems at Maine's are pretty substantial. Sheldon, too, right? That's another place where we have really, really big water issues that are that are coming to light. So, you know, you might see more. But um, for people who are curious, I, it's somewhere on the city website. Sarah, have, have you seen the Tigen Bond report? Oh. I have. I was just poking around for it, and I can't put my finger on it. Yeah, I'll see if I can find the link to it. It is it is truly worth reading to get an understanding of what's going on in terms of our fields and and facilities and and maintenance. So, you know, Florence Fields, amazing, wonderful. Uh, some of the new things that we're looking at and maybe pairing the tennis courts, amazing, wonderful. And at the same time, how do we keep it up? Unless tonight and tomorrow uh, prove us wrong, I'm not sure we'll ever see rain again. So the whole issue of flooding may just not be an issue. So, uh, so there you go. Um, we're we're going to have a drought until we have a flood, and then we will once again have a drought. Yeah. Yeah, and if we really want to go, we can start talking about the burning of the of wildfires. So you know. All right. Before we spiral into into natural catastrophes um back to Maine's field uh other comments on it i i guess i'm wondering and i'm sort of maybe this is the sense of the committee that this is another one that we kick kick the can for two more weeks down to a december meeting i think sarah has a list of some of those questions particularly in teasing out the two different budgets that 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 uh that 
we see being proposed here. And Julie assures us that that can be done. Uh, or maybe. So is that is that does that make sense for folks? Um, Martha? That makes sense. Um, and I would just ask that um, the rec department um, is sure that Ty and Bond has um, included what they really think they're going to need to address this, um, because I think the expectations of this study are really high based on the letter letters that were received. And I wouldn't want to see, you know, uh, something be left out or it not be expansive enough in order to address the problems. So are we good with uh, uh, Chris Hellman? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know at the beginning of the meeting how I was how how I felt about this. So I really appreciate your comment, Brian. That sort of got this going, which was this is really two stories that we're trying to tell, and not and not one. Um, during the course of listening to y'all, I, I, I've come to the conclusion that that. The one story is so much more important than the other as far as timeliness goes that that that's really where we need to to be focused and i'm i'm drawing in part on i'm going to try and keep this the short version but i'm drawing in part on my experience when i was part of the uh the city's stormwater commission 15 years ago where we were looking at uh stormwater management in the 21st century and we weren't talking about sustainability at that point but but that's where the conversation has gone. And one of the things that I learned is that if we didn't have a system of levees and dikes that protected this town, about 800 acres of the downtown would be in a flood zone. And uh, which basically means there's a good portion of this town that, that would be underwater if, it, if water wasn't being properly managed. And one of the things that uh, we talk about and the Army Corps of Engineers talks about because it's their levy um, is what they call the 100 year storm event. And the, the rough definition of that is something that is sufficiently unprecedented that you only expect to see it happen once every 100 years. Um, since those discussions, and I was talking to Doug McDonald down at um, DPW about this a couple of weeks ago, since those discussions, when I was doing this just 15 years ago, we've had three are what are categorized as 100 year storm events. Um, and that to me speaks to um, the need to get a handle on um, not what we're going to do with this facility, but whether we're going to have a facility to use and and how to make sure that that happens. And I don't know that it's that dire. Maybe it is something where we can easily manage it. But I think that Martha raises a really good point when she says that, you know, if we're looking at just in the context of of that small area, we're probably not going to get a full enough answer. So I think that Whatever we do, um, uh, discussion about how the property is going to be used really becomes secondary to um, whether it's going to be accessible on a regular basis and what it's going to take us as a community to make sure that happens. Thanks, Chris. Uh, any other comments on this? Okay, so as a to reiterate what we've done so far, we've got the affordable housing fund in the shopping cart. We've got the uh, Cook Avenue housing in the shopping cart, Shepherd House in the shopping cart, historic outbuildings in the shopping cart, the Grow Food Pavilion um, to be revisited once some of those questions are answered. Same thing with this Mainsfield uh, proposal. Same thing with the mortgage. Uh, subsidy program. We've kicked that down to two weeks uh, as well. So last but not least on our list and the most expensive of our projects is the JFK uh, tennis and um, basketball court rehabilitation. Um, Julie, you want to lead us off in this and your comments on this? Uh, it would be better to rehabilitate those courts than to lose somebody into a crack one day. Someone's going to fall through the court. 
someone's going to fall at the court. Someone's going to trip and get injured at the court. You know, the courts are in really terrible shape. They need the rehabilitation. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking very carefully about the question Chris asked about bonding for this as a possibility. It is, it is an expensive but long-term project that would help us with yet another facility that's a high-use facility, um, which is that, that court area at JFK. Thank you. And and Julia, um, refresh my memory. Six hundred thousand is already committed from the city. Is that correct? Uh, I would have to pull up the budget again. There's I don't know the exact amount. Sarah, now. is that is that what it was? Yes, I think that's correct. And that sounds partially right. the CPA request was what up was um, developed uh, to address an increase in construction costs that wasn't anticipated. So it was an initially planned that capital improvements would cover all of this, but it could not. Uh, Chris Tate. I, I fully support this project. Um, I'd like to see it in the shopping cart uh, based on other, you know, other things that get funded or holding money aside for the spring. I, I think Chris Hellman's idea about bonding also makes sense. So I would support it in either uh, configuration. Um, maybe Sarah can check with the uh, with council and and give us some of those um, schedules of you know the five year bonding or whatever that would look like. But I, I would support it in either uh, configuration, either fully funded or bonded. Uh, Kevin. Um, I also would support it either way, but I would prefer to see it bonded. I, I believe we will have a need in the spring for substantial amounts of money, and this is the biggest single piece. Um, Chris Hellman? Uh, what Kevin said. Martha? Um. I, yes, I, I would go either way, bonding it or funding it. Um, I do think this process, can, this project in particular is going to get more expensive if it's not done soon. It, it already escalated quite a bit over the course of when this appropriation was made by the city, which I think was five years ago, maybe. I don't remember what they said in their presentation. Um, the city's $600,000 commitment was made yeah, a few years ago, and it's already over a million. So that's going to continue. I would imagine that's going to continue, and I think it needs to be done sooner rather than later. I just want to say that I still have a few questions about the subsurface conditions out here. Um, you know, pavement usually cracks uh, severely when you have uh, water building up underneath it, and it freezes and thaws. Everybody knows that. Um, you know, they did re try to reassure us by saying they had done borings. Um, so, um, you know, I guess I have to trust the engineers on this. I just am not entirely convinced. I wouldn't want to see this fail after we put a million dollars into it. But um, otherwise, I support the project. Um, uh, let me. Yeah, um, I think I'm just inclined to support it. I like the idea of bonding. I also like watching all the tennis players when I go swim at JFK. Uh, Jeff? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me. Continue. Oh, I just would like them to not break their ankle. That's all. Jeff, I I fully support it. Uh, funding either way. I was um really shocked with some of those picture pictures, and I felt really sorry for the players on those teams that have to deal with those conditions. And um, I would like to see it addressed as soon as possible. So. I'm all in. Um, I'm wondering whether we could invent a new sport. We have tennis, we have pickleball. What about chasm ball or a uh, crack ball? Um, and we could be on to something where we, we in Northampton set the stage for so many innovative issues. Um, I'm also in support of, of, uh, of funding. I'd like to hear more from Sarah about bonding. And I would like to suggest that this 
what I'm hearing is that this goes into the shopping cart, whether we bond to bond or not to bond can be, um, Sarah can have that figured out for us in two weeks. Is that, is that doable for you? Yeah. I, mean, I don't an anticipate any issues with the eligibility of bonding. It, it seems fine. Um, but I'll, I can talk to bond, bond council and the finance director about the details of that. And it, that would be for the full amount, correct? Not not a partial bond. I think everybody's head seems to be nodding on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you could bring us back uh, some of those different scenarios, a three-year or a five-year or, or something like that. Okay. Great. So we have four, it looks like we have five projects, def, four projects in as is into the shopping cart. The fifth one, um, the JFK uh, tennis and basketball to bond or not to bond, but it's fully funded in the shopping cart. And then three other proposals with some significant questions being asked. Uh, and that seems to be, are, 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 are we good to go with moving into a December, what we say, fourth meeting? Is that right? Uh, hopefully all of us can can be there. Uh, for that, um, any any further comments on, on on this? Are we satisfied with this process and with the decisions that we know we need to make uh, two weeks from tonight? Any further questions or comments? As we continue and hopefully end our deliberations in two weeks. Any other conditions that um, we might want to propose? Uh, let Let's try to think the, think of those in our heads, and then and, and it can be for ones that are in the shopping carts already, or th these other ones that we have that we have uh, questions about. So it's a good time at that point to be talking about about conditions. I think, and someone correct me if I'm wrong. When we come back on uh, Wednesday, we really don't need to revisit four of those projects. We seem good good to go on that. The the the, the JFK we're we're looking at bonding and then the other three we have we have questions and hopefully that will that will get back to it. Does that make sense for everyone? Okay. Um uh any further comments on any of these proposals or the process going forward in two weeks? All right, moving to the last item on the agenda, which is any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published. Have a wonderful holiday if you are so inclined next week. And uh, we will see you all on December the 4th. Thank you, Sarah, for your work. And see you then. Thanks, Sarah Thank and Brian. And ending on perfect nine o'clock. Hey, two, two hours. That's not. Thanks, too bad. everyone.